Also, please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Naomi Davis, Correctional Counselor 3 with the Division of Rehabilitative Programs at California Medical Facility. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the Thank you, CTC Honor Guard. 
Thank you, Councillor Davis. That was a beautiful rendition of our national anthem. Now, California State Prison Sacramento, Catholic Chaplain Greg Meller will give the invocation. For today's invocation, I will first offer an introductory prayer followed by a blessing by poet, author, John O'Donohue. God of creation, we come before you in this present moment and give thanks. We give thanks for the opportunity to gather in person once again for this year's CDCR Medal of Valor ceremony. We give thanks for this day when we recognize and honor the many people who have performed exceptional acts of service in CDCR institutions. We give thanks for today's honorees whose courage, determination, respect, compassion, and commitment serve as examples for others to follow. We give thanks for family, coworkers, and friends whose support encourages us to perform our work to the best of our abilities. God of new life, we remember CDCR staff who were injured in the line of duty in the last year. May they experience full recovery of mind, body, and spirit. We remember CDCR staff who died in the last year, and we pray for their families. As they mourn the loss of their loved ones, may they feel your loving presence and experience the healing that only you can offer. God of protection, we ask that you watch over and guard CDCR staff, especially those who directly face the threat of violence every day. Provide them with the strength and endurance to respond effectively to the many obstacles and challenges they encounter. And so may God bless each one of you. May the gift of leadership awaken in you as a vocation and keep you mindful of the providence that calls you to serve. As high over the mountains, the eagle spreads its wings. May, you, may your perspective be larger than the view from the foothills. When the way is flat and dull in times of gray endurance, may your imagination continue to evoke horizon. When thirst burns in times of drought, may you be blessed to find the wells. May you have the wisdom to read time clearly and know when the seeds of change will flourish. In your heart, may there be a sanctuary for the stillness where clarity is born. May your work be infused with passion and creativity and have the wisdom to balance compassion and challenge. May your soul find the graciousness to rise above the fester of small mediocrities. May your power never become a shell wherein your heart would silently atrophy. May you welcome your own vulnerability as the ground where healing and truth join. May integrity of soul be your first ideal, the source that will guide and bless your work. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Maller, for your inspiring words. You may be seated. It is my privilege to introduce the Secretary of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Kathleen Allison.
Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to the 37th annual Medal of Valor Ceremony for CDCR. It is my pleasure to join all of you in honoring outstanding employees of CDCR, the Division of Juvenile Justice, and California Correctional Health Services for their bravery and service. I am so excited that we are in person this year. Two years not being in person is not the same thing. And for all of you who are watching online or who received awards over the last couple of years, I'm very sorry you were not able to experience the joy of, of being in person for your ceremony. This year we are pleased to be hosting, um, as I said, you know, in person. And I want to thank all of, I want to thank the Office of Public Employees Communication for continuing to put this event on over, over the last several, over many years, excuse me, <clears throat> to recognize our staff for bravery, heroism, and dedication. These awards are one of the highest highlights of our year. It is when we are typically come together, all parts of the state, to celebrate our incredible staff for their work to improve our department and for their service to our communities. I also want to say that while everyone in the department is not getting an award, we all salute and thank you, every single one of you, for all the hard work and dedication that you do day in and day out within our facilities. And I also want to thank your families for their dedication to support you through this difficult journey in your career. I'm very proud of all of you, and I'm honored to work alongside of you. We also want to thank the California Correctional Supervisors Organization for graciously hosting this Medal of Valor ceremony for the last 18 years. Without CCASO's contribution, we would not be able to gather here today. In addition, I'd like to thank Creekside Christian Church for making this beautiful facility available to us once again. They have been providing this facility for as long as I can remember, and it's comfortable and it's, it's very welcoming for all. So thank you, and I, I certainly hope that you enjoy today's ceremony. Thank you, Secretary Allison. And now, we honor the recipients of the 2022 Medal of Valor Awards. Please welcome Amy Miller, Director of the Division of Correctional Policy, Research, and Internal Oversight to present our first awards. Thank you, Lieutenant Robinson. Our, each year, directors of our divisions recognize employees in their areas for outstanding work. The awards are given annually to a person or group of people who consistently demonstrate remarkable leadership skills, integrity, values, vision, commitment to excellence, agency performance, community service, and diversity. We are so honored to work with these fine employees who truly embody the spirit of this department. Detailed descriptions of their service can be found in your program. Please join me in a round of applause for the following employees. Executive of the Year, James Jim Robertson, Warden of Pelican Bay State Prison. Administrator of the Year, Madeline McLean, Deputy Director of the Office of Fiscal Services. <laughs> Correctional Supervisor of the Year, Marvin Carruthers, Correctional Lieutenant, Chuckawalla Valley State Prison. <laughs> Correctional Officer of the Year, Francisco Borboa, Correctional Officer, Chuckawalla Valley State Prison. <laughs> Health
Healthcare Professional of the Year, Rohit Charasa, Information Technology Specialist 3 at California Correctional Healthcare Services. <laughs> Rehabilitation Professional of the Year, Martin Griffin, Assistant Chief of Education in the Office of Correctional Education. <laughs> Division of Adult Parole Operations Professional of the Year, Jamal Rowe, Chief Deputy Administrator. <laughs> and finally, Division of Juvenile Justice Professional of the Year, Danita Razo, Acting Captain, Northern California Youth Correctional Center. Justice Professional of the Year, Danita Thank you Razo, all for the incredible Acting dedication Captain. to the department and the positive impacts you bring to all those we serve. Now we move on to the Distinguished Service Medal. The Distinguished Service Medal is awarded for an employee's or group of employees work conducted with the department for a period of months or years or involvement in a specific assignment of unusual benefit to the department. This year's Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Chief Psychologist Dr. Carl Fabrizio Jr better known as Dr. Fab, by his patients and colleagues at Substance Abuse Treatment Facility and State Prison in Corcoran. Dr. Fabrizio had prior commitments and will not be able to attend today's ceremony, but a big round of applause, applause for Dr. Fabrizio. <laughs> Dr. Fabrizio has rendered distinguished service to CDCR for 21 years. He began his career on November 5, 2001, as a clinical psychologist with the California Youth Authority, now known as the Division of Juvenile Justice, at Heben G. Stark Youth Correctional Facility in Chino. Dr. Fab, as he was quickly branded, dedicated eight years treating 17 to 25-year-old seriously mentally ill and often violent individuals in both the intensive treatment program and the Intensive Behavioral Treatment Program. He was also a member of the Combined Custody Mental Health Training Team that conducted in-service training on a host of custody and mental health related topics to all staff. When HG Stark closed in February 2010, Dr. Fab transferred to the Southern Youth Correctional Reception Center and Clinic in Norwalk. He continued providing individual and group therapy and psychological assessments to the most seriously mentally ill and violent youthful offenders in the state for an additional two years. When the Southern Clinic closed in 2012, he transferred to a clinical psychologist position at the Region 4 Division of Adult Parole Operations Parole Outpatient Clinic in Orange County. There, Dr. Fab provided individual and group psychotherapy to seriously mentally ill parolees and registered sex offenders. When the passing of AB 109 eliminated this position, Dr. Fab transferred to the Joint Department of State Hospitals, CDCR, Dialectical Behavior Therapy, or DBT program. This innovative, highly demanding hybrid inpatient treatment was taught by outside consultants and took three years to complete. Dr. Fab simul simultaneously provided DBT to incarcerated persons and state hospital patients. Dr. Fab's leadership helped establish the first fully staffed comprehensive DBT treatment program in California in 2014. Dr. Fab moved to Central California later that year and became a senior psychologist at Kern Valley State Prison, where he supervised both the enhanced outpatient program and clinical correctional case management programs. At SATF, Dr. Fab has supervised the short-term restricted housing, clinical correctional case management, and enhanced outpatient programs with diligence, flexibility, and professionalism. 
For the past two years, Dr. Fab has served SATF as chief psychologist during the institution's most trying and incredibly demanding transition in and through the COVID-19 pandemic. As chief psychologist, he has demonstrated exceptional leadership, nimble responsiveness, and visible stamina while meeting his daily operational goals and overarching vision to provide world-class mental health treatment. Dr. Fabrizio, thank you for your service. Another big round of applause. Okay, I'd like to now introduce the Division of Adult Institutions Director, Connie Gibson, who will be presenting the first set of Bronze Star Medals. Good morning, everyone. It is exciting to be back in person, and thank you, Director Miller. The Bronze Star Medal is the department's award for saving a life without placing oneself in peril. The employee shall have used proper training and tactics in a professional manner to save or clearly contribute to saving the life of another person. Our first Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Counselor Donald Ronnie Gibbons from Wasco State Prison. Mr. Gibbons had previous commitments and could not attend today's ceremony. While picking up dinner with his wife one night in Bakersfield, Correctional Counselor Gibbons was first on scene to a traffic collision where a pedestrian and her dog had been hit by an SUV. Counselor Gibbons called 911 and immediately administered CPR to the 65-year-old woman until emergency medical services arrived. Counselor Gibbons and his wife also found the woman's dog nearby who had also been injured. They gave the dog to the responding officers to give to her family. Despite Counselor Gibbons' courageous attempt to save the woman's life and the life of the dog, unfortunately both succumbed to their injuries. Thank you for your service and heroic efforts. Let's give a round of applause to Counselor Gibbons. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Jimmy Rubio from the Dual Vocational Institution. Please come forward to accept your award. One Friday morning in January 2021, Officer Rubio was heading home from work, from working first watch when he happened upon an accident involving a motorcycle and two vehicles. He stopped to offer assistance and was informed that the motorcycle rider was thrown into a field and witnesses were unaware of his condition or location. The rider was in bad shape. His helmet had flown off from the force of the impact and he had severe injuries to his hand and leg. Officer Rubio applied pressure to the wounds on the leg and fashioned a tourniquet from supplies from his own vehicle. Through Officer Rubio's training and efforts, he kept the victim conscious until medical personnel could respond. Once they arrived, he helped cut off the victim's clothes and assisted with putting him on the gurney. The motorcyclist was transfer transported to a hospital and survived the crash. Thank you for your service. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Special Agent Chad Greenwood from the Fugitive Apprehensions Team. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> on July 5th, 2021, Agent Greenwood was on his way to the gym when he came upon a recent crash. A 17-year-old driver had crashed into a semi parked on the side of the road. Officer Greenwood and other bystanders stopped to assist the driver of the vehicle. While they tried to open the doors, the car caught on fire with the driver still pinned inside. Agent Greenwood and other bystanders grabbed buckets from, nearby, from a nearby house and doused the flames until the fire department arrived. The fire department extinguished the fire and removed the driver from the vehicle. The driver sustained injuries and burns as a result of the crash, but ultimately survived his injuries. Thank you for your service.
Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Officer Manuel Carrera from Mill Creek State Prison. Officer Carrera could not be present today due to previous commitments. While driving home one June evening last year from the Sierra Conservation Center, Officer Carrera spotted a large cloud of dirt on the side of the road directly in front of him. He came to an abrupt stop when he saw a black SUV had crashed head on into a tree just off the roadway. The first person on scene, Officer Carrera, rushed to the crash site. As he approached the vehicle, he met a woman behind the wheel who was having difficulty staying conscious. He opened the driver's door and asked her if he could help her out, but she was incoherent. As he assessed the situation further, he smells fire and smoke coming from the engine compartment of the vehicle. To prevent further injury due to fire, he helped the woman out of the car and took her to a safe distance away from the crash site in another driver's vehicle. Once emergency services had been called, he notified SCC to send his fire department to the scene. He stayed on scene until relieved by CHP officers, CAL FIRE, and AMBULAMP services. Thank you for your service. Let's give a round of applause. The next Bronze Star is awarded to Clifford King, Correctional Officer at Mill Creek State Prison. Officer King could not be present today to accept his award. In May 2021, Officer King was having what began as a normal day off until he suddenly heard screaming coming from the backyard of his next door neighbor's home. King peered over the fence they shared and saw an unconscious 18-month-old infant and two parents in great distress. He learned the parents had found the child face down in their pool. King's training and instincts immediately kicked in. He jumped over the fence and took control of the situation, masterfully rendering CPR until emergency services arrived on the scenes. These actions were instrumental in saving the life of the child. This act was no surprise to King's peers who credit him as being an outstanding employee who is always helpful and positive. Thank you for your heroic act and service to the department. Let's give a round of applause. The next set of Bronze Star Awards will be presented by our Division of Adult Parole Operations Regional Administrator, Karen Thacker. Thank you, Director Gibson. To start off this next group of awards, we present the Bronze Star awarded to Robert Wagner, Parole Agent 3 at the Fontana Parole Unit in San Bernardino County. Please come forward to be honored. In October of 2021, Agent Wagner found himself in the right place at the right time for two separate incidents. The first took place on October 13, 2021. While heading home from work after completing his duties for the day, Agent Wagner saw a toddler walking in the middle of a busy street. He turned his hazard lights on, he exited the vehicle and took the toddler into his possession. He quickly learned the toddler had wandered, to the pro um, wandered away from a nearby house he was able to safely reunite the child with his mother and made notifications to the proper investigating agencies. The second incident took place on October 20th, 2021, while headed to work. He noticed a woman performing CPR on a male at the Sacomb Lake Recreation Area. Agent Wagner pulled over and ran to help. The man was not breathing, but based on his training and experience, Agent Wagner recognized the man had signs and symptoms of a possible drug overdose. The woman at the scene verified this was the case. Wagner promptly administered his CDC-issued uh, Narcan spray, reviving the man. Emergency medical services arrived on scene shortly after. Directly following saving the man's life, Agent Wagner went straight into work and resumed his duties. Agent Wagner has served the department since 2011, starting as a correctional officer and eventually transitioning to parole operations in 2019. Since his shift to parole, he has quickly promoted to Parole Agent 3, serving San Bernardino County. Thank you for your commitment to the community, both on and off duty. Our 
Our next bronze star is awarded to Jason Ortiz, Emergency Services Coordinator in the Correctional Office of Safety. Please come forward to accept your award. While driving home from work one morning in May 2021, Jason Ortiz observed a cloud of dust and debris emerging from the shoulder of the highway. He drove closer to the area and came upon a severely damaged vehicle that had downed a light pole and crashed into a tree. Ortiz pulled over to provide aid. He noticed that a woman had been ejected from the vehicle and was waking her way back to the crash site. Miraculously, she had only minor injuries. A male passenger was attempting to exit the vehicle, but he had visible leg injuries. Ortiz helped him and then prompted him to take a seat and stay calm. The driver, however, was pinned in the vehicle and had sustained serious injuries. Ortiz could not safely extract him, so he ensured he stayed conscious and put pressure on certain areas of his body to address bleeding. Ortiz brought order to the scene, applied first aid, and kept victims calm until emergency services arrived. Thank you, Jason Ortiz, your expertise in emergency services, your ability to remain calm and helpful as a true asset to this department and the community. Our next bronze star is awarded to Moses Sandoval. Correctional Counselor One at Headquarters Classification Services Unit. Please come forward to be honored. <laughs> On November 29th, 2021, Sandoval became alarmed when he saw a vehicle hurriedly pull into his neighbor's property. Soon after, his neighbor exited the vehicle in a panic, rushing to the passenger side door to pull an unconscious person out. Sandoval recognized that this was a medical emergency and rushed to assist. He immediately began administering CPR on the victim, and he did not stop until additional emergency services arrived. Thanks to Sandoval tapping into his training and performing CPR so quickly and diligently, the victim survived. Thank you, Moses Sandoval, for meeting the moment with your life-saving action. Our next bronze star is awarded to Leo Warner, Lieutenant Security Audits, Auditor, Office of Audits and Court Compliance. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> On November 27, 2021, Lieutenant Warner was traveling through remote Arizona while coming home from visiting family in Texas when he came across a scene of a large car crash. Lieutenant, without hesitation, Lieutenant Warner pulled over to assist. He learned that the driver had fallen asleep at the wheel, going off the road and flipping the vehicle several times. Several passengers had been ejected from the vehicle and several more were still in the vehicle, unconscious and badly hurt. Lieutenant Warner assist, assessed the situation, provided needed first aid until additional first responders arrived, he also helped provide guidance to helicopter reporting to the scene, helping them locate the scene and safely land. Lieutenant Warner's quick actions and ability to facilitate important information in a time of great distress was key in this situation. Thank you for your heroic act. Our next bronze star is awarded to Alex Ortez, Parole Agent 1 from the Division of Adult Parole Operations, Compton GPS, Harbor District. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> On November 17, 2021, Parole Agent Ortez received notification that the GPS device assigned to a parolee in Long Beach was in a no motion status and the parolee was not responding from inside the residence. Upon arrival, Ortez knocked on the parolee's door in a welfare check but did not receive a response. He then contacted Long Beach Police Department for additional responders. Ortez entered the apartment and discovered the parolee lying on his bed with a faint pulse but unresponsive. He tried to revive the parolee but was unsuccessful. He then administered Narcan nasal spray to the parolee's nose, to which he remained unresponsive. 
Eventually, paramedics arrived and the parolee was transported to a nearby medical facility. He has since made a full recovery. Had it not been for Ortez's actions in a crisis situation, clear thinking, and immediate response, it could have resulted in loss of life. Parole agent Ortez, thank you for your service. Our next Bronze Star Medal Awards will be presented by the Undersecretary of Healthcare Services, Dr. Diana Tosh. Thank you, Karen. Our next Bronze Stars are awarded to Correctional Lieutenant Brian Arnold, Correctional Officers Darren Hitchcock and Kaleeb Severins, along with licensed vocational nurse Carrie McClure, all from Sierra Conservation Center. Please come forward to be honored. On December 9th, 2021, all were headed to work at SCC in the rainy early morning hours when they came upon a head accident on the highway. One vehicle, a pickup truck, was down in a steep embankment and the other was mangled with major damage, smoking and blocking the eastbound lane. The first on the scene were correctional officers Lance and King, who will receive the Silver Star today. Hitchcock, Severins, and Arnold Hitchcock and Severins and McClure then arrived and immediately started helping out assessing the accident site. Officer King was able to get the injured driver from the vehicle down the embankment and he and Lieutenant Arnold treated the injuries. Officer Lance responded to the driver in the other vehicle who was trapped and he was able to move the airbags out of the way and pull the steering wheel away making it easier for him to breathe. Arnold, Hitchcock, Severins, and McClure helped officers Lance and King assess and monitor both the victim's injuries and stabilize them until local first responders arrived. When fire and other emergency vehicles arrived on the scene, CDCR staff relayed detailed information to them on the victim's status and assisted in extracting the driver. Jaws of life were used to pry open one of the vehicles so the driver could be extricated. Both were rushed to the closest trauma hospital 40 minutes away. Unfortunately, the driver who had been trapped passed away from his injuries. The response from all SEC staff involved was above and beyond the normal demands of correctional service and of great benefit to the community. Thank you all for your service. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Captain Andres Manuelos from California Institution for Men. Captain Manuelos was, is unable to attend the ceremony today and Warden James Hill will accept the award on his behalf. <laughs> Captain Manuelos was exiting the institution on October 22nd, 2021 when he noticed a car pulled over on the wrong side of the road. He saw a female exit the vehicle and started walking on the road against traffic. When he approached the woman and asked if he could help her, she put her arms around him and hugged him and said, I'm ready to go. God is good and I'm ready. She was holding a teddy bear and a note with money around it. She then darted into the street against traffic with an 18-wheeler bearing down on her. Lieutenant Benzuelos grabbed her and carried her to the sidewalk. He then called the watch commander and requested a code one response with 911 assistance. Chino police arrived and took her into custody for further observation. Captain, Captain Benzuelos' actions saved her life that day. Captain Benzuelos, thank you for your service. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to the Correctional Officer Brian Clark from the California Medical Facility. Please come forward to accept your award. On April 14, 2021, at around 8 p.m., 
Officer Clark's son came home and told his father that a female neighbor was lying in the middle of the street in distress. Father and son ran to her aid. She was unresponsive and not breathing. Officer Clark and his wife immediately called 911 and he began performing CPR. Officer Clark continued CPR until Vacaville paramedics arrived and took over life-saving measures for the woman. Later that evening, Vacaville police came to Officer Clark's home and told him that the neighbor eventually regained a pulse and survived. Officer Clark's actions saved his neighbor's life that day. Officer Clark, thank you for your service. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Correctional Sergeant Jacob Fillmore and Correctional Officers Kevin Jenny, Serge Camponzi, Don Brakey, Daniel De La Cruz, and Vance Wheatley. Officer Serge Camponzi is unable to attend today. Sergeant Fillmore, who was crucial in getting the officer help, has since passed away after a courageous battle with cancer. Warden Tracy Johnson is accepting the award on his behalf. Thank you for your service, Sergeant Fillmore. On May 24, 2021, at Folsom State Prison, Correctional Officer Don Brakey was attempting to contact one of the prison's perimeter tower officers via telephone, but was unable to get an answer. Officer Brakey became concerned for the welfare of the officer so he requested two officers that were signing in for their shift to go to the tower to check on the officer. Officer Kenny, Kevin Jenny and Daniel De La Cruz immediately headed to the tower. Since Officer Brakey was busy operating the gate, he called another officer, Vance Wheatley, and told him to keep trying to contact the tower officer via telephone while the other officers were headed to the tower. Officer Wheatley was unable to contact the tower officer on the phone and became concerned. So he notified the Folsom Prison Fire Department via telephone, advising them of the situation. Officer De La Cruz and Jenny arrived and climbed the tower ladder. Through the glass of the tower hatch, they could see the officer was laying on the floor unconscious. They unfortunately were unable to gain entry to the tower as the hatch door was locked. Outside, Patrol Correctional Officer Jake Fillmore retrieved the emergency entry tower key from Tower 1 Officer Serge Camponzi and reported immediately to the tower of the officer having the medical emergency. Sergeant Fillmore, Officers Jenny and Dela Cruz rendered first aid as soon as they gained entry to the tower and until Folsom Prison Fire Department arrived. Because of all their heroic actions that day, the officer was able to return to work two days later. You are all heroes. <laughs> to present the final group of Bronze Star Medal awardees, please welcome Under Secretary of Administration Jennifer Barreto. Thank you, Dr. Tosh. <clears throat> Forgive me for the delay. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Rodney Spate, Correctional Lieutenant, California State Prison, Solano. Please come up to accept your award. <laughs> While driving in South Lake Tahoe on May 9, 2021, Lieutenant Spate observed a vehicle veer out of its lane and into oncoming traffic, crashing through the guardrail and ro rolling over multiple times, ejecting the driver. He quickly put on his hazard lights and made a U-turn. Pulling off onto the shoulder, he observed an adult female had been ejected from the vehicle and was lying face down in the dirt. He noticed she was breathing, 
but had a compound fracture of her left ankle and a large bruise on the left side of her forehead and eye. <clears throat> he and another passerby placed her in a position so she could better breathe. Others stopped to lend assistance and noticed an infant in the vehicle and pulled her out. Emergency medical services arrived on the scene and airlifted both driver and infant to the nearest trauma center. Lieutenant Spate gave a report to CHP officers. His quick, decisive actions brought a dangerous situation under control. Thank you. Our next Bronze Stars Medal is awarded to Correctional Officer Aaron Leon from Wasco State Prison. Please come forward to accept your award. On March 27, 2021, Correctional Officer Aaron Leon responded to an emergency situation near the roadside of his residence in which a vehicle was involved in a rollover accident. Recognizing the critical situation, Officer Leon immediately responded to the accident to assist the occupants of the vehicle. While responding to the accident, Officer Leon made contact with 911 to call for emergency medical response. Once Officer Leon responded on scene, he observed someone still inside the vehicle and proceeded to break out the back window to assist the injured person. Officer Leon removed the occupant from the vehicle and proceeded to provide first aid until emergency medical personnel arrived. The vehicle occupant was taken to the hospital and eventually made a full recovery. There's no question, Officer Leon's direct and quick response was instrumental in this happy ending. Thank you for your service. Our next Bronze Star is awarded to Stationary Engineer Cesar Kiraz from Avenal State Prison. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> On July 9, 2021, Stationary Engineer Kiraz demonstrated swift and heroic actions in saving the life of a fellow Stationary Engineer, Kevin Sizemore. Upon arrival to his post in the early morning, Mr. Kiraz observed Mr. Sizemore in an office slumped over in a chair, unresponsive and did not appear to be breathing. Mr. Kiraz immediately entered the office and placed Mr. Sizemore on the ground into a recovery position, announced a medical emergency over the institution's response system, and requested personnel to the location. Due to Mr. Kiraz's immediate action and call for assistance, Mr. Sizemore survived and recovered from this incident. Mr. Kiraz's selfless act reflects positively on himself and is truly an example for others to follow. Thank you for your heroic act, Mr. Kiraz. The next Bronze Star Medals are awarded to a group of staff from Ironwood State Prison. Correctional Lieutenant Ediberto Mora, Correctional Sergeant John Bradley, and registered nurse, Myra Mora. Please come forward to be honored. <laughs> On February 4th, 2021, Lieutenant Mora and his wife, registered nurse Mora, were well into their 90 minute commute to work at Ironwood State Prison. When they saw a large plume of dirt bellowing in the air, just off the westbound lanes opposite of them. Two children and two adults were involved in a rollover accident along Interstate 10, east of Dillon Road. The crash involved an F-250 pickup and a trailer hauling two off-road vehicles. As trained emergency first responders, the Morris quickly pulled their vehicle over to the shoulder and ran across the interstate to the crash site. They did not see exactly what had happened, but as they arrived on scene, they both knew the accident was serious, and they both began providing aid to the occupants of the mangled pickup truck that had come to rest along the side of the Interstate 10 in a ditch. A female child, approximately two to three years old, was taken outside of the truck. Not knowing if she had been ejected or taken out, Lieutenant Mora attended to and calmed the child. The adult male driver had a laceration to his head and was bleeding profusely. Registered Nurse Mora took Lieutenant Mora's sweater and treated the driver's wound. Registered Nurse Mora then attended to the woman who was ejected 
into brush adjacent to the vehicle, keeping her stationary as they were not sure if she had suffered any internal or neck injuries. Ironwood State Prison Sergeant John Bradley also stopped to help the victims and assisted Lieutenant Mora in searching the vehicle for other passengers when they noticed an infant was still in the car seat. Sergeant Bradley reached through the vehicle's broken rear passenger window and was able to undo the harness to the car seat and remove the infant from the vehicle. The infant was, was responsive. It did not appear to be injured. Sergeant Bradley held and monitored the infant until additional emergency personnel arrived and took over the scene. Lieutenant Mora, Registered Nurse Mora, and Sergeant Bradley, we are honored to have you as part of the CDCR family. And the final Bronze Star is awarded to Intermountain Conservation Camp Correctional Officer Spencer Layton, who retired from the department last year. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> On June 28, 2021, at approximately 8 o'clock in the evening, Correctional Officer Layton was assigned to security coverage to a strike team consisting of 24 incarcerated persons, three fire captains, and two correctional officers for the Lava Fire in Siskiyou County. While staging in a large turnout along the side of the road and waiting for a line assignment, Officer Layton noticed a white Dodge pickup pulled to the blockade device established to prevent the public from driving into the fire area. The blockade device was approximately 75 yards away from the strike team that was waiting. Officer Layton quickly observed law enforcement officers motioning for a, the truck to drive in a different direction and not turn down the blocked road. He noticed the verbal commands by the officers became more intense as the pickup truck continued to drive towards the group. Officer Layton immediately ordered all of the crew members outside of the emergency crew transportation vehicle to get behind the CDCR utility. As the other law enforcement officers drew their weapons and began to discharge live rounds at the charging vehicle. As the law enforcement officers continued to fire at the vehicle, Officer Layton unholstered his own weapon, coming to a low and ready position, and moved to a covered position, ensuring all fire crew members were safe and accounted for. It was later determined the driver of the pickup was deceased as a result of the exchange of gunfire with the law enforcement officers. Due to Officer Layton's quick actions and instructions, all fire crew members were safely positioned behind the emergency vehicle and reported no injuries. His quick action was heroic and demonstrated an exceptional measure of his character as a correctional officer. Thank you, Correctional Officer Layton. Now here to present the Silver Star and Gold Star Awards, please welcome Under Secretary of Operations, Jeffrey McCumber. Thank you, Under Secretary Barreto. And another congratulations to all the uh, award recipients thus far. I have the privilege of introducing today's Silver Star and Gold Star Awards. The Silver Star is the department's third highest award for acts of bravery under extraordinary or unusual circumstances. The employee shall display courage in the face of potential peril while saving or attempting to save the life of another person or distinguish himself or herself by performing in stressful situations with exceptional tactics or judgment. Our first Silver Star is awarded to Matt Jones, a correctional captain at California Substance Abuse Treatment Facility and State Prison in Corcoran. Please come forward to accept your award. <laughs> captain Jones and his wife, Andrea Jones were enjoying the drive home from a family vacation on February 14th, 2021. As they approached the intersection of Utica and Derry Avenues near Corcoran, they saw five people standing on the back of a canal. A car had run off the road and was in the canal nose first. A woman was in her car yelling for help. Captain Jones pulled over and his wife called 911. He asked the woman if she was all right. She said, her young daughter was in the back of the vehicle in a car seat. As the car started sinking further into the water, 
Captain Jones opened the rear door, removed the child from her car seat, and handed her to one of the bystanders. He then instructed the driver to exit the car by climbing over the middle console. He and two other men linked their arms together so he could safely pull the woman through the rear door of the car and onto the bank of the canal. The woman and her daughter suffered only minor injuries from the accident. Captain Jones intervened quickly and showed courage, extraordinary decisiveness, and presence of mind to save a mother and a child. Thank you for your service, Captain Jones. Our next Silver Stars are awarded to Richard Lance and Paul King, who are both correctional officers at Sierra Conservation Center. Please come forward to accept your awards. <laughs> Correction officers Lance and King were first on the scene of a head-on accident that had just occurred on Highway 108 and 120 in the pre-dawn hours of December 9th, 2021. It was raining and other vehicles were sliding to a stop on the slippery road. Without delay, Officer Lance and King stopped their vehicle assessed the severity of the accident, and jumped into action. One vehicle, a pickup truck, was down a steep embankment. The other, mangled, smoking vehicle, had major damage and was blocking the eastbound lane and partially blocking the westbound lane. Correctional Lieutenant Brian Arnold, Correctional Officers Darren Hitchcock, Caleb Severins, and Licensed Vocational Nurse Carrie McClure, SEC employees who were on their way to work, arrived and started helping the situation. Officer King slid down the hill to the pickup truck, got the injured driver out, and helped him up the steep hill to the roadway. Officer King, a former firefighter, then used a first aid kit to treat the driver's injuries and with Lieutenant Arnold, applied a soft splint to the broken arm and monitored him to keep him from going into shock. Officer Lance opened the door of the other vehicle. He had to move the airbags out of the way to reach the driver who was pinned in. The steering wheel was pressed into the driver's chest cavity. With nothing but his own strength, Officer Lance pulled and bent the steering wheel, making it easier for the victim to breathe. Officer Lance and his fellow employees talked to the victim to keep him from passing out, and they relayed, relayed information about the victim's conditions to arriving first responders. Because of the remote location, responding firefighters sought their assistance in extracting the track trapped driver from the vehicle. First responders used the jaws of life and both drivers were rushed to the closest trauma hospital 40 minutes away. Despite the heroic efforts of SCC staff and local fire and emergency medical responders, the driver extracted from the vehicle passed away. Thank you, Officer King and Lance, for your extraordinary efforts to save the lives of others and service to the community. Our next award is for the Gold Star Medal. The Gold Star Medal is the department's second highest award for heroic deeds under extraordinary circumstances. The employee shall display courage in the face of immediate peril in acting to save the life of another person. The Gold Star is awarded to Stephen Leach, a correction officer at the California Healthcare Facility. Please come forward to accept your award. Officer Leach was off duty and heading home on January 14, 2021, when he witnessed a blue sedan cut off a black sedan while sitting at a stoplight in Stockton. The two cars collided and the black car crashed through a brick wall into a garage connected to a house. Officer Leach safely parked his car and rushed to the scene. There was smoke and flames from, coming from the car and four teenagers, teenagers were trapped inside, screaming and crying for help. The car was heavily damaged and covered with debris. Officer Leach first pulled the driver from the car and had him sit on the curb. He then grabbed a girl from the back seat who was bleeding from her face and was suffering from what appeared to be a broken leg and laid her on the grass. He returned to the car to grab another girl from the back seat and assisted her to the curb. The fourth victim was trying to crawl out of the vehicle. Officer Leach also placed her at a safe distance from the car all four teenagers appeared to be suffering from concussions, and Officer Leach remained with them until the Stockton Police Department 
and firefighters arrived. There were several people taking video of the accident, but no one came forward to offer any assistance during Officer Leach's rescue efforts. The Stockton Police Department credited Officer Leach with making a huge difference in keeping things calm as the area where the accident occurred was not friendly towards law enforcement. Officer Stephen Leach also received the Silver Star at the 2020 Medal of Valor Ceremony for saving two people who had been in a car accident in June 2019. He again bravely, bravely and selflessly put himself in harm's way to save the lives of four young people. Officer Leach, you are a stellar example, the best in CDCR and humanity. Thank you. Our next presentation will be for the Medal of Valor, and Secretary Kathleen Allison will present this award. A lot of papers up here you have to mess with. Thank you, Undersecretary McCumber. Before I have the honor of presenting the Medal of Valor, I would remiss to let this ceremony end without acknowledging that this is the final MOV for our amazing MC, Lieutenant Robinson. Lieutenant Robinson, can you please join me? I'm gonna try and get through this without crying. Sam is commonly known to many as the mayor of San Quentin. The reason why he's the mayor of San Quentin is Sam has selfishly been working in the position of PIO at San Quentin State Prison for 15 years. He has represented this department by touring through countless legislatures, governors, governor candidates, uh, national, national visitors from Norway, from I, I can't even remember all the various countries that have come to tour San Quentin. It get, obviously, San Quentin is our most notoriety prison, and Sam represents it with such professionalism and a smile that is so infectious. I have grown to love Sam over the many, many years and never worry when we've got guests coming in, I'm like, oh, Sam's got this. You know, if the warden's not available, I, Sam's got this. I, I never worry. And so Sam is retiring after 26 years of service to this department and the citizens of California. Sam is definitely a living example of correctional excellence from his commitment to public safety, his empathy and sincere leadership to the daily positive interactions he has with both staff, population, and visitors. We have been honored for many years to have Stamps, Sam step up, I need water, uh, to MC this event. I don't know how we're gonna do it without you. We will certainly miss your trademark voice. And Sam, it has certainly been an honor for me to work with you. You are truly a role model, and you have changed this agency here ever after for the better. Thank you so much, Sam Robinson. I got through it without crying. I'm very impressed with myself. 
I, I also want to, I realize there's so many people that come and go out of our department, and I just really want to take this moment. If you're in this room, if you're listening online, and you're gonna leave us between now and our next ceremony, which a lot of people do, I wanna thank you for your exemplary service to this agency, for the care that you've given, you've given to this department, I know how hard it is to work day in and day out in our environment, but many of you do for many, many years. Sam has 30 years. Other people have 31, 33, 35 years in this department, and you give selfishly. You give back every day, so I thank you. So now I will do my real job. <laughs> it is my honor to present the final award, the Medal of Valor, the Medal of Valor is the department's highest award. The Medal of Valor is awarded to an employee who distinguishes themselves by bravery, heroism, above and beyond normal demands of correctional service. This year's Medal of Valor award goes to David Tapia, correctional officer at North Kern State Prison. Please come forward to accept your award. On August 31st, 2021, Officer Tapia, in his assignment as Investigative Services Unit, was conducting his duties off prison grounds in Delano, California. He was in an unmarked CDCR vehicle. As he approached a shopping center, he saw a Hispanic man throw a softball-sized rock at the window of the Department of Human Services. Officer Tapia immediately called 911 to report the incident was placed on hold. He pulled aside, pulled on the side street and maintained constant visual on the suspect. The, men threw, the man threw additional softball sized rocks at the window several more times. Officer Tapia entered the shopping center and positioned the vehicle near the DHS building. The man threw another large rock at the window, this time shattering it. And he entered the building. Officer Tapia got out of his vehicle to get a closer look while still holding on with 911, <clears throat> awaiting to report his observations. Officer Tapia heard people inside the building begin to scream. The man then left the building and returned and threw a flaming canister inside, which fully engulfed the building in flames. Officer Tapia did not know how many people or children were inside the building. He knew this was a life-saving situation, so he decided to make contact with the suspect and detain him. Officer Tapia unholstered his state-issued handgun and carefully walked towards the man who started approaching him. The man was about 15 yards away when Officer Tapia pointed his weapon, identified himself, and yelled, police. He ordered the man to get down on the ground and assume a prone position. Fortunately, the man complied. Officer Tapia then ordered him to place his hands behind his back and cross his feet, to which he also complied. Since Officer Tapia was the only responding law enforcement officer at this time, he maintained his weapon pointed at the suspect until police arrived. The, De the Delano Police Department eventually arrived, restrained the man, and took him into custody while responding firefighters extinguished the flames inside the building. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Dina Murray, director of the Department of Human Services in Delano, sent a very thoughtful letter to Officer Tapia and personally thanking him for apprehending the suspect. Officer Tapia demonstrated great bravery to 
to protect the community and display courage in the face of immediate life-threatening danger. Congratulations, Officer Tapia. Your actions are worthy of this award. Thank you so much. Please join me in watching a video as officer, uh, regarding Officer Tapia. Thank you so much. I always wanted a career in law enforcement. I've been with the department now for about 15 years. It was just a great department to join. Currently in ISU, been there for about four and a half years. Best job in the institution to have. I think the approach to the job is, you know, having great partners to, to work with, great supervisors, a supporting administration, a supporting warden that supports uh, our mission and what we do inside ISU. Every day is different for us, especially being within and inside the unit. The Delano Courthouse is a couple blocks away from here. We frequently have to go to the courthouse. That day I was tasked with that duty to go pick up some paperwork. Some road constructions kind of led me off to uh, the street uh, to my left here, Randolph Street. I was coming northbound down that street. I happened to look to my right, saw something you normally don't see every day. Uh, I saw an individual with a rock throwing it at, at this uh, window of the Department of Human Services building. I got on the phone, called 911. You know, I could hear a lot of screaming from individuals inside. As I was on the phone, I continued to monitor the situation, which was progressively getting worse at the time. Finally, when I entered the uh, parking lot, the front window of the business finally shattered from the individual throwing the rock. As soon as I positioned my vehicle and got out, I saw the individual, you know, had a canister in his hand, uh, lit the canister on fire, uh, threw it inside the building, and the building became fully engulfed in flames. The doors uh, actually shattered from the fire, from the fire inside, uh, but the whole front window there of the whole business was completely shattered. Glass everywhere, uh, building on fire, smoke coming out, uh, just, you know, people screaming, it was, it was pretty chaotic. I was most concerned for the people inside, uh, the people that were outside the business. I approached the business, I encountered him probably about where that white car is. Um, I identified myself as a peace officer, told him to put his hands up in the air and to uh, assume a prone position on the floor. I complied with my orders. You know, I had him at gunpoint at that time and then Delano PD showed up and we took him into custody. You know, Delano is a pretty small community. We have two institutions here in this city. So, you know, we feel like we're a part of this community. So their safety and, you know, the overall was, was the main goal. I was just thankful when I heard that everybody was made it out of the building safe and just waited around until Delano PD and their detectives show up to make a statement to them. It was kind of a surreal experience to have. Most of us uh, inside of our unit, uh, we you know do a lot of training. A lot of us are alarm response instructors, use of force instructors. You know, knowing the policy, knowing what we're able to do. Correctional awareness. You know, we're always having to look left, look right. You know, just being confident in the decisions. You know, I was making at the time. You know, my kids were you know pretty pretty excited. You know, dad's you know getting an award for you know, something that they, you know, saw on the news. Pretty funny story. You know, my lieutenant had called me into the office. I was out on the facilities, told me I needed to get in the office right away. You know, kind of made it seem like something was urgent. He called the warden and, you know, we had her on speakerphone and, you know, I was notified that, you know, I was receiving this award. It's nice to receive the award and it's a nice to be recognized, but it's part of our duties to, you know, protect everyone. So, you know, the award is, is great, it's prestigious. North Kern's a, a great place to work. You know, a, a small institution, but very tight. To have something like this to bring back to the institution is great, it's a great feeling. I will definitely accept it on, you know, the behalf of all the partners that I work with day in and day out. Thank you so much, Officer Tapia. Congratulations again.
Congratulations to all of our award recipients. Your dedication to public service, your willingness to put yourself in harm's way to save others, and your professionalism exemplifies the best of CDCR. I could not be prouder to lead this agency with the wonderful people that we have that support our work day in and day out. This concludes our ceremony. I hope that you all enjoy the treats outside. Take a few minutes. We'll all be around for pictures. If you're ready, if you have additional family members you want to take pictures with, please don't hesitate um, and enjoy this facility. Um, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you to you and your loved ones for joining us, and best wishes to you all. Thank you.